Now we've been told to configure router one with the last IP address in that subnet. Now this is the subnet that we concentrating on initially. So let's start with that subnet. The way you work out first, last, and broadcast addresses as follows. The network has the host portion populated with binary zeros. So notice host portion is all zeros. The first host has the host portion populated with binary zeros except for the last bit, which is set to a one in binary. So that's the first host in the subnet. The last host in the subnet has the host portion populated with binary ones, except for the last bit, which is set to binary zero. And I'll show you in a moment what that is, but it's easier to work out the broadcast address first. So the broadcast address equals that subnet and the host portion is populated with binary ones. So it's one one followed by four ones. Now you can work this out by saying 32 plus 16 plus eight plus four plus two plus one, but I find it easier to do the following. If this is set to one and everything else is set to zeros, so it looks like this, that equals 64. One less than that equals 63. So if you asked for something like this, what is the broadcast address? Have a look at the next subnet and subtract one to get to the broadcast address of the previous subnet. The next subnet is 192.168.164. The broadcast address of the previous subnet is that subnet minus one. So in other words, it's 63, and then this is 62. So for this subnet, that's the network and first host. This is the last and broadcast address. Second last, which we need for the switch, is essentially one less than that. You can work out the binary, but it may be easier just to subtract one from the decimal, so that's 61. And the third last is one less than that, which is 60. So we now know the network, the first host, the broadcast, the last host, second last host, and third last host. Easiest way to work this out is to work out the network and then work out the next network. One less than the next network gives you the broadcast address for the current subnet, and then you can just subtract one from that to get the last host, second last host, and third last host. First host is equal to the network portion plus one. So there are our values. That means we can now configure this router with the last IP address in the subnet. So currently on this router, it only has a loopback interface configured. It doesn't have an IP address configured on gigabit 000. Remember the network 192.168.1.0/26 has two bits that are part of the network portion two binary bits, looks like that, which equals 192. So we can configure the gigabit 000 interface with an IP address of 192.168.1.62 because that's the last IP address in the subnet. So 62 and the mask is 255.255.255.192 and that's because these two bits are part of the network. So we've got 255, 255, 255, two bits there, which equates to 192. So show IP interface brief. We can now ping our local IP address. The switch needs to be configured with the second or last IP address in the subnet per these instructions. So configure the switches with the second last IP address and then the DHCP servers with the third last IP address. So again, here's our switch. I'll give it a name, switch one, interface VLAN one, no shut, IP address 192.168.1, 
And the next IP address that we can use is 61. 255.255.255.192. So show IP interface brief. That's the IP address of the switch. Can the switch now ping the router? Yes, it can. So switch has been successfully configured. Router has been successfully configured. Let's configure the DHCP server. So on the Ethernet interface, we're going to configure a static IP address of 192.168.1, and the IP address will be 60 in this example, third last IP address. Subnet mask will be 255.255.255.192. Now the default gateway will be the router 192.168.1, and the router once again has IP address 62, so 62. DNS server in this example will be 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. This is the internet DNS server. It's configured with DNS names for cisco.com and facebook.com. So the server has been configured. Can we ping the switch? Yes, we can. What about the router? Yes, we can. So we've configured IP addresses and default gateways on the network devices. Now, one thing I still need to do on the switch is specify a default gateway, which will be the router. Router has IP address 62. So again, the switch can ping the router. We've finished configuring the switch. Now on the DHCP server, we need to configure a DHCP pool. Default gateway is gonna be the router 62, DNS server is gonna be the Google DNS server, and we can allocate IP addresses from 192.168.1.1, so from the first IP address in the subnet, to a number that we decide. So we could, as an example, allocate 100 IP addresses. So I'll save that. So we've specified the pool name, default gateway, DNS server, starting IP address in the pool, and the number of IP addresses that can be allocated. Now, can I specify 100 host addresses? The answer is no. I should actually specify only something like 50, because the subnet only supports 62 IP addresses. So remember the formula, two to the power of something, which is the number of bits, minus two, gives you the number of hosts that are supported in a subnet. Here we've got six binary bits. So two to the power of six, that's the number of bits in the host portion. What's two to the power of six? Two to the power of four is 16, two to the power of five equals 32, two to the power of six equals 64. So 64 minus two gives us 62 hosts that are supported in a subnet but we wanna allocate some of those IP addresses to network devices. So we don't wanna allocate the full subnet to the DHCP server. We'll only allocate a portion of the addresses to hosts via DHCP. So on PC1, does the PC have an IP address? Yes, it does. It's been allocated 192.168.1.3. Can it ping? the default gateway, yes it can. PC1 is an example, IP config, it's also been allocated an IP address 192.168.1.2, can it ping its default gateway, yes it can. And on PC2, do something similar, IP address has been allocated and it can ping its default gateway. So we've successfully configured subnet one. Now we need to configure the serial link. And then once I've done that, I'll check whether these devices can access devices on the internet. And then I'll configure the other subnets. Mm -hmm.